Welcome to the Heart of a Viking. These art lessons are taught by Mrs. Mendo from the Cape and Lopen School District in Delaware. I hope you have fun, create imaginative works of art, and make sure you share them with someone because, after all, the visual arts are meant to be seen. Hi, Cape artists, and welcome back to the Heart of a Viking. In our episodes this whole week, we've been talking about patriotic symbols and colors and creating artwork that shows our American patriotism. So I hope you've enjoyed everything we've made so far. Today, we're on to our last piece of artwork, and that's going to be a Statue of Liberty printmaking project. I'm excited to share with you all the awesome information I've learned about the Statue of Liberty and the really cool printmaking project as well. There's also a little extra bonus crayon resist part to our project as well. So I'm excited to show all that to you. I hope you're excited to learn. Grab your art supplies, your thinking cap, your creativity, and I'll meet you over at your art creating space. The Statue of Liberty is our inspiration for today's art project. However, did you know that her actual name is Liberty Enlightening the World? The Statue of Liberty Monument was gifted to the USA by the French in 1886. It was a gift to seal the friendship that France and the US endured during the American Revolution. It marks the centennial of the American Declaration of Independence. The Statue of Liberty was designed by a French architect and sculptor, Frédéric Auguste Barnholdy. It originally was built by the French people in France and then was transported to the US. The pedestal was built by the Americans. There are many different symbols on the Statue of Liberty which symbolize different things. For example, the torch symbolizes the light showing the path to liberty. And the tablet represents law establishment. What other symbols do you see? And can you find what they are symbolizing? The Statue of Liberty has some pretty impressive measurements. Can you see that from the bottom of her pedestal all the way to the top of her tallest torch flames that she's 305 feet tall and six inches? That's pretty incredible. What other measurements do you find impressive? The Statue of Liberty sits on Liberty Island, which is situated in the New York Harbor. She faces southeast. It was strategically placed in this direction to act as a welcoming symbol for ships entering the harbor. The original color of the Statue of Liberty is a dull brown because it's made of copper. If you look at a penny, that's the same color we're talking about. Pennies are made of copper too. However, over the next 30 years, it turned green due to the effects of weather on the copper. The green color we see now is a patina that formed on the copper surface due to the oxidation over the years. The same thing would happen to your penny if you left it out in the weather for 30 years too. All right, you guys, are you ready to begin our own Statue of Liberty project? Today we're making a printmaking project. That means we're going to be pressing into a piece of styrofoam to create our drawing and then adding some color and printing that or pressing it onto our paper to make the final work of art. And I thought we'd add some really cool um, fireworks in the background as well using a crayon resist technique. So what do we need to get started? All right, Cape Artists, we are ready to start our Statue of Liberty printmaking. Okay, so for this project, we'll definitely be needing a pencil. You'll need your scissors, an eraser. We'll need a pen, like this one, like an ink pen. We'll need some washable markers, some crayons, a spray bottle with water, and we'll be needing a piece of styrofoam, like the kind from the top of that egg carton and a piece of computer paper, the kind that comes out of a printer, and then finally a piece of newspaper to protect your area. All right, so to start, we'll need our piece of paper and our scissors. All right, so start by folding your paper in half one time. I had mine vertical in front of me and I folded the bottom to the top. Then I would like for you to cut straight up that line to cut your paper in half. Then take one half and fold it in half 
and cut up the center and then repeat on the other half. All right, and that will give you four equal pieces. Perfect, so to throw a little bit of math in here, we're going to be creating a portrait of the Statue of Liberty on one fourth and then a set of fireworks on three fourths. So let's start with the Statue of Liberty on our first fourth. Okay, so we need one fourth of our paper, so there's the one, and I'm going to start by folding it a little bit. So I'm going to fold the left to the right side, making a long, thin fold, then open it up, and then I'm going to fold the bottom to the top. These folds are just going to be guidelines for me because the Statue of Liberty's face is symmetrical, so I want to make sure I make it the same on both sides. All right, so I'm going to start in the middle, and I'm going to start by drawing her crown. So this rounded line is like the top of her head as well as the bottom edge of the crown that's on her head. It's a rounded line that's just above the horizontal fold. And now I'm going to make a letter U shape underneath of that where half of the letter U is on the left side of the vertical fold and the other half of the U is on the right side. And I'm even going to double check to make sure that those two portions are even. Okay. Then I'm going to move to the top and I'm going to repeat this rounded line one more time. Okay, and now I'm going to start putting the points on the top. I'm going to start with the one in the middle. The one in the middle crosses that vertical fold. Half of it's on the left side and half's on the right. Now, since this is symmetrical, I'm going to make a triangle shape on the left side and one that matches on the right side. They should be very similar to each other. Now I'm going to put two more in between. Now the cool thing here is there's a perfect amount of space to put two and each one of them has to get a little bit taller. So there's a nice arch formed across the top edge. You don't want them all to be the same height. You want them to get gradually taller as they work their way towards the middle one. That should be the tallest of them all. Okay, so now right across the middle of this, I'm going to put some rectangles. These little rectangles are actually spaces in the crown of the Statue of Liberty. The first one in the center crosses the vertical fold and then there's two on each side. And now down to the face. I'm going to go about halfway down and I'm going to make her nose as just a little letter L shape for her little nose. Then on the left side, she'll get an eye and the eye will look a lot like your eye and mine, rounded at the top and at the bottom, kind of lemon or football shaped. And then a matching one, of course, on the right side. And then don't forget to put the iris in the center. Next, I'll need her mouth. Half the mouth goes on the right side of that vertical fold and the other half the mouth goes on the left side. Try to make them as similar as you can. And then a little curved line underneath her lips for the top of her chin. Now we're gonna move on to her hair. Her hair is gonna start as two little scoop lines across her forehead. And then a sort of diagonal-ish line that sort of zigzags its way down a little bit to the bottom edge of your paper. Go all the way to the bottom with her hair. And the only thing missing now is her neck right in the center. Okay, that looks great and that's done. Okay, so we're just gonna push Lady Liberty off to the side for a second and work on the other pieces of paper, the three fourths that are left. And I'm getting out three crayons here, a red, a white, and a blue, and I'm going to draw some fireworks. If you've never drawn fireworks before, we're basically just drawing the action lines that would represent what a firework might look like. So of course you can't see when I draw with white crayon, but with my red crayon, you can see that my lines are going from a center point and like shooting out from there. So let's try it again. There's my center point and then my lines are shooting out. The idea here is not to make it even, don't make things exactly the same, be a little bit irregular about what you're doing. So it really looks like these are little explosions in the sky, pretty colorful firework explosions, but pretty colorful um, explosions that are patriotic in color in the background. So I'm gonna make a couple on each one of my three-fourths of the papers that are left.
You might have noticed this is a little bit different technique. These ones look like the ones that are shooting up from the ground and then have the droopy, drippy sort of um, fireworks sparkles. So a couple of different designs here. You can pick and choose which ones you like the best. Okay, take a minute to switch gears here. We're going to switch over from coloring and drawing to preparing our piece of styrofoam. So you'll need to put away your crayons, your pencil, all of that stuff that we were just using, and you'll need to get out your piece of styrofoam or your egg carton and some scissors. Okay, so now let's prepare our piece of styrofoam. Go ahead and take your egg carton. I'm gonna start by cutting off the lid. Then I'm going to trim away all the sides so that I get one flat rectangular piece. Okay, so now I'm going to get my drawing of my Statue of Liberty that I was finished making, and I'm going to place it on top of my styrofoam. My styrofoam is a little smaller than my drawing, so I'm going to trim away the side of my drawing that's a little bit wide. I'm sorry, the side of my styrofoam that was a little bit too wide. There we go. And then I'm going to play a little bit with my drawing to see where I want it to fit on this styrofoam. So do I want to put it down low like this so that I don't draw some of her neck? Or do I want it to be up higher or kind of in the middle? So I'm just sort of shifting around my piece of styrofoam so that I can get the best possible picture. I'm gonna go kind of in the middle. So I cut off some of her neck and a little bit of the top of the crown. Okay, now you can tape this in place if you're worried about it wiggling around. It does wiggle a little bit. If you're not worried, you can just hold it like I am and you're going to use your ink pen this time and you're going to trace the entire picture. As you're tracing it, you're actually making dents into the piece of styrofoam and probably ripping your paper along the way. All of that is perfect. If you rip the paper, no problem, and you definitely want those dents in your piece of styrofoam. So I'm actually gripping my pen a little harder here, and I'm pressing down a little harder than I would normally write with a pen because I want to make sure I make those dents in my piece of styrofoam. And I want you to trace everything as much as you can that fits on your piece of styrofoam. Okay, so now remove your piece of paper, set it to the side, and we're going to investigate our piece of styrofoam a little bit. So I want you now to use your pen once more, and I'd like for you to retrace those dented lines that we created using your pen. What this does is two things. One, it makes the dents deeper, and it makes them a little smoother because sometimes tracing through the paper will make the lines a little jumbled. So by tracing again with your pen, you get a chance to smooth out those lines that you traced. So definitely do this step. Make sure you trace it with the pen. Make your lines smoother and deeper as you go along. And a little bonus, you can see them a lot better now too. All right, so switching gears a little bit. Let's reorganize our space. Let's put away all the cutting materials and coloring and even the pen, put that away. Now we need our piece of styrofoam with our Lady Liberty on it. We need some washable markers, probably two colors to get started. And we need our pictures that have the fireworks on them. Okay, so we're about to start coloring on the piece of styrofoam. Coloring on styrofoam is easy. It doesn't require any special talent or magic. Um, however, you do need to be careful that you don't press too hard because you don't want to put extra dents in the piece of styrofoam. In addition, whenever we're coloring, sticking with a minimal amount of colors, like two or maybe three, probably is a better choice. And then you can color right over the lines that you drew when you drew the Statue of Liberty. You'll notice that when I color on my face in a few moments that I'll color right over top of all of those lines as if they're not even there. I'm basically just coloring in the whole space. But that's the way you want to do it too because you'll get to see the 
printmaking magic after we wet our paper and move to the next step. So right now you're going to pick two colors, one for the background and one for Lady Liberty herself, and then we'll get started here in just a moment. Okay, so I'm going to start with my lightest colored marker. So I'm gonna start with my yellow here, and I'm going to be coloring the outside edge. I always color the lighter color first because I don't want to get the darker ink on the lighter tip of my marker. So I try and keep it as clean as possible. So I'll color with yellow first. I'm going to use yellow as my background space and color all the space around the Statue of Liberty with my yellow. Then I'll put that away and I'll color the face with the green. You might be able to guess why I chose green as my first color because that's the color she actually is. So I was trying to be realistic in my first one here. We'll have a little bit more fun the next time. Okay, so now you're going to put away those markers and we're going to just set Lady Liberty off to the side for a second as we pick which one of our firework pictures we want to start with. I'm gonna start with this one and I'm going to start by wetting the paper. Now, I want to spray it so the whole paper looks transparent. Did you notice that as I wet mine, I could start to see the text from the newspaper underneath showing through? That's what we want. We don't want any puddles though. So that's that's why I flip mine over sometimes and press it onto the newspaper. I allow the newspaper to suck out some of that extra water. Now I'm going to pick up my piece of styrofoam, flip it over, and when I get it lined up, notice I adjusted mine when you get yours lined up where you want it, press down. And don't take a shortcut here, press it for a while. Take your time, make sure you press the center, the corners, press it down. There's no such thing as pressing it too long. So when you finally think that you've pressed the whole thing, you're very slowly and carefully going to pick it up off of your piece of paper and we're going to see our very first print of Lady Liberty. All right, Lady Liberty is showing us all the beauty that printmaking can offer. So printmaking is an imperfect art technique. So if there are some places where the marker isn't quite as dark uh, or like in my eyes, I don't see her irises, that's okay. Printmaking is a little bit imperfect and you just need to accept it and move on. In addition to that, did you notice that all the lines that I had drawn with black ink in the first place when I first traced her on the styrofoam are now white? That's because I dented them in and they were protected from getting any of the marker on them. So yours should look the same way. If you're noticing that you can't see bright white lines on your print where we had drawn Lady Liberty, you might not have pressed deep enough into the styrofoam. But guess what? Good news. Just grab your pen and try trace her again, pressing a little bit harder, and you can solve that problem really easily. So let's move on and make another one. Okay, so now we just need to repeat two more times. So I'm going to take this Lady Liberty and put her off to the side a little bit so she can dry. And I'm going to take my piece of styrofoam, choose two more markers, I don't even need to wash it off in between. I can just choose two more markers. I'm going to pick another light color. I'm going to choose orange as my next light color. And I'll pick something a little bit darker for the Lady Liberty's face. I'm going to go unrealistic this time and go with purple. And I'm just repeating these same steps. Okay. And once that part is done, you're going to choose which one of your fireworks pictures you want to work with next. Wet the paper, check for puddles, press it onto your piece of newspaper if you see any puddles, and then get started with your second of your print making prints of Lady Liberty. Excellent. Okay, you set that one off to the side and we're ready for our last one. Another light color, another dark color, and our last fireworks piece of paper and our very last print of Lady Liberty.
Now, as I wet my paper here, I realize this side of my newspaper is too wet to absorb any of that extra puddles. So I decided to move my piece of styrofoam and use the drier side of the newspaper. All right, here's your option for today. You do not have to do this next step, but you absolutely can if you want to. It just kind of gives your piece of artwork a more finished look, and it would allow you to display it a little bit more easily too. So here comes your option. So these pieces of artwork are technically finished. I'm just going to use my scissors here and trim away some of the white paper right up against the edge of the color, just like that. And I'm going to be repeating that on all of them. Afterwards, technically they are finished. However, if you want to go one step further, and if you have an extra piece of colored paper laying around, then you might want to frame these. So to frame them, I would need one extra colored piece of paper and a glue stick. So if you want to do that, you absolutely can. You can join me here. We'll be doing that in just a second once I get all these trimmed up. All right, so if you're joining me for the optional framing, you'll need a colored piece of paper. I'm gonna go with black and a glue stick. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to play with my Statue of Liberties and my piece of paper and just see where and how they look best. I'll put my paper vertical. I will change the direction of these. I'll turn my paper sideways to be horizontal. So I'll just play with it for a while and see which way looks best. And then just glue them down as you would anything else. What do you think, Cape Artist? These are beautiful. The colors are so vibrant. I love the way that markers create such a vibrant color whenever you use them with water like we did for our printmaking technique. So I hope you had a great time making these Statue of Liberty prints. I think it's really cool the way the crayon resists the wet marker whenever we are printing and I can still see the fireworks even though there are some beautiful bright colors over top of them. I hope you enjoy that too and I can't wait to see you back here next time at the Heart of a Viking. HOB artists, don't forget to hop on over to Art Sonia to upload a photograph of your piece of artwork to your art portfolio. I can't wait to see it.